so shiny. Oh, the light. It's like light was made for this. How sad would light be with nothing to shine off of? With no wave crests on which to twinkle. With no cool spoons. The ice cream, it reaches with melting, boneless fingers, clinging to the lip of the spoon like a life raft, like the spoon is its only chance, not knowing that soon... <gasps> darkness surrounds, dark and wet and hot. And then the acid bath. And the ice cream thinks, well, I guess I should have researched this spoon a little first. But then the spoon comes back out. No more ice cream on it. Oh, no more surface area to shine. And it's all that matters. And wars have been fought for shiny things. Homes invaded. Murders carried out because you wore something too shiny to the wrong part of town. They're hard up over there. Can't afford shiny things. A variety of social and economic factors have arrayed themselves over the course of the past 3,000 years to keep them from accessing the shine. Well, they found ways, extra legal ways, that result in you, one, losing that necklace, and two, losing the attendant neck. People go to your funeral, all dressed in black to help keep them from seeming too shiny. And their teardrops, though, they defy the whole act. Little diamonds leaking from your face top, or your face middle, depending upon your forehead size. Once knew a lass with a big one, like real big, like troublingly big. Automatic door sensors couldn't figure out she was coming. They're like, this isn't motion. This is just a big forehead. She looked into having a surgery about it, but they don't make that. So instead, she's like, we're bedazzling this. Original plan was tattoos. Tattoos of shiny things. Settled on a tattoo of a mirror. Wanted to know if it was possible to make it look super realistic. And the tattoo artist said, yeah, absolutely. That'll be 3000 additional dollars and we can throw in blue ink. And then she said, I'll do you one better, chief. F you, I'm getting the implant. So they put a mirror into her forehead. And now when you look at her, you look at yourself. She has harnessed the power of the shine. People, they're not robbing her to steal this forehead mirror. They don't have the surgical background to properly remove it without shattering it and spreading little frits of glass into the strange little micro fissures and solid immobile wrinkles that make up the human skull. Ah, oh, the shapeliness of it. If you think about a well-formed skull, mm, mwah, chef's kiss, chef's, chef's make-out session, that's how good skulls is. And, and the glass, it's not in the skull, but the screws are. That's careful measurement. That's a real unethical surgeon. Went to both the School of Hard Knocks and also Oxford. He went to the School of Hard Knoxford, learned how to do the body modification. Either going to be in jail like six minutes from now, or he's going to be the one to lead the cyborg revolution when all the transhumanists finally get their wish. Oh. You want a smart fingernail? You want to be able to access Instagram on your fingernail? Do you want to be able to snap a photograph of whatever it is taking place before you in the human drama in which you have found yourself a supporting character for smart fingernail? 
And that's when the disasters begin. Oh no, oh no, somebody's hacking my fingernail. It's growing out of control. Now my fingernail matches that girl's forehead. I don't even have a mirror for it. The nail isn't enameled enough with the tensile fitness. I haven't been eating enough riboflavin to get that tension between the nail particles clinging, grabbing each other's forearms and saying, Aah! just pull until the other one gets back up on the cliff face and says, I owe you one. And they're like, no, you forgot about that time in Sacramento. We're even now, but I'll save you any day. And then more chefs make out because they're both chefs. In the chef subterfuge chef KGB, secret societies and intelligence agencies are all recruiting chefs these days. First off, you need to poison somebody. That's your boy right there. That's your lady over there. But more importantly, they understand hospitality, and hospitality is the core of any betrayal. You can't betray somebody who thinks you're garbage to begin with. You can't stab somebody in the back if they don't trust you enough to turn their back to you. That's where all these desserts come in. Give people the itis with the chocolate lava cake, little drizzle of the cherry syrup. They're all glucosed out of their brains, saying, I just need one quick nap. Hey, chef, <laughs> make sure nobody uh, excavates my spine while I'm out. And the chef says, I will absolutely make sure that nobody else does that. They share a chuckle and then he falls asleep and never wakes up. Score another one for secrets. <laughs>